Black, Educated, and Broke is a weekly entertainment podcast where we mix hip hop, headlines, and all things ATL into the success of Black millennials in the Black culture. All righty, we are back here on Black, Educated, and Broke. I know a very heavy first segment there, but of course, the Breonna Taylor indictment, we had to get into it, guys. Again, you can follow more on this story on what's going on by following us on our social media pages at Black Educated and Broke, and on Twitter, BEB Podcast underscore ATL. So before I took the break, I had gave a teaser about some Black excellence, you know, at an Atlanta Black power couple, mm-hmm, Majesty and Elise. I gave you a little teaser, but I'm going to let Mike be and Maya, since they kind of are the ones that brought this uh, team together with us. Tell us what happened, Maya and, and uh, Mike B. You want me to go, Mike? Go ahead, Maya. Maya, okay. Maya runs the digital team that day. <laughs> <laughs> I was a one-man band that day, so I saw them on the shade room, and I was like, okay, I'm not usually on the shade room like that, so I was like, okay, I see two black people, and it says real estate. Let me click and see what they're talking about, so I saw it, and I read it, and then it said Atlanta. I was like, oh, share the group, because this is us in the ATL, and Randy was like, post it. Post it now, and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so next thing I know, Mike is commenting, asking, what is this exactly? And then I'm not sure who runs the Majesty Elise page, but y'all commented back. I was like, oop, they commented back. And Mike was like, oop. <laughs> they, I got red. They said, they said, you don't have to do no digging. I was like, all right, man, well, let's hit them up. <laughs> and long story short, here they are. Boom. <laughs> Boom. So, so, hey, so welcome, I want to say welcome. I really thank you because it was fun. I, li- I like that because what it showed me because me being a person who has a business where I manage social media properties, right? And the thing is, when you when somebody comments on your page or tags you, it's all about being quick, fast, you know, accurate. Like, hey, I'm here. I'm available. Let's talk about my business. So I was like, yeah, I, I, they're, they're, they're aggressive about what they're doing. They're trying to get it out there. So I'm like, that's the kind of energy that I look for and that we need. So I appreciate that personally. I do too, because I honestly didn't expect them to reply at all. Yeah. So thank you for being here. And, and, and we want to say thank you guys for having us on here. Right. This is super dope. Like, we, you know, like the way you guys come together. And oh, and my, my daughter is right here. She, oh, that's okay. Yeah, okay. she's okay. over here. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is super. This is super dope. I had no idea it was this setup, but this is a great surprise. Um, or whatnot. And yeah, we definitely wanted to make sure that we reached back out immediately when our people interact with us specifically, because we want to let you guys know we're here and we're we we we're, we're, we're a, a family. You feel what I'm saying? Like we're yes. you, you're us. Like we feel the same emotions and everything you're feeling right now. Um, even we have different areas that we have skill sets in, but that don't change anything. You know what I mean? So we like to interact with our people, um, or whatnot and just, just deal with problems head on and, and, and topics. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if I can go ahead and get it top, getting one with the first thing, just, you know, majesty and Elise. So majesty is you good, sir. Elise yes. is your beautiful wife. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yes. All right. So just the, cause I'm going to get into e- e- How do I say Evtopia? E- e- Evo- Evopia? Yeah, it's like, oh. E- e- evolution and utopia. E- oh, evopia. Yeah, there oh, you but, go. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody that's <laughs> listening, remember that evopia, evopia, because yeah. mm, we're going to talk about it, get it in your brain, evopia. But before evopia, there was Majesty and Elise. So tell us a little bit about your background, how you guys kind of came to, and a little bit how you got to where you are, if, if, that, if you can answer all that. <laughs> So um, basically, I moved from Nashville to Atlanta a few years ago, and I met my now husband on Tinder. Hey! Um, yeah, I, yeah, it was. We both swipe right, and um, we went on our first date. Is that how you do it? Swipe right? Let me write that down. <laughs> 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 we uh we went on our first date and we've been inseparable since. Um, I came down here actually for a marketing job at a company out in Buckhead, and um, he was um, in cryptocurrency business at the time, and so uh, eventually I left my corporate job and joined my now husband in business, um, and we've had um, success together since. Well, I want to add a piece there because 
Right, she made it so perfect. Tell it like it is, Madison. She made that so cute with a little bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say she's making it sound like we just met and just flew off. And there, there, there was a lot of of grinding yeah, yeah. and str like that we grinded our, our way through it together. And what she didn't say was, as far as the I did have a Bitcoin business which was doing tremendous, but regulations caught pushed me out of it. So, mm -hmm. and that, that's what we were going through at the time, like when she came in. So like she came in at a time when I was having challenges in my business. You, you, if, if, if that, if that yes. makes any more sense, give more, it does. Right. So, yes. you, you see what I'm saying? And we built like we were one, we, I had to get out of that business in general because of the regulations. Unfortunately, as a black man, I have a, a past and that doesn't help out a lot with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So there's some, you, you see what I'm saying? Um, but anyway, I got into real estate at that point um, by by way of a, of a. And I was actually fired from that job that I came relocated. From. Come on, keeping it real on black educated and growing into the all the way funky. She was, she, and that, that's more story to that too. She wasn't fired. In this forget season. them folks. Forget, forget them, them folks. Right. They want y'all yeah. back now. I'm sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, my point is, we got into real estate or whatnot together. Um, at ground zero, I'm talking about nothing. We both, you're basically mm -hmm. starting over. So I just wanted to make that clear. And then, so we built from there. And don't get me wrong, we have had a, a good amount of success, but it's because of the work that we put in. We worked 16 hour days, um, you know, for next to nothing so that we can get information and knowledge from mentors and things like that. And that's how we were able to position ourselves. So there was a, a strong ground period where we dealt without and we, we, we sacrificed you know, wants and things like that so that we could build to the point that we could become a uh, property owner. So I just wanted to add some, you know, <laughs> clarity. Mm -hmm. Some context. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, um, so like the week before we uh, started interacting on Instagram, we had this story um, out of uh, South Georgia, outside of Macon, uh, about the um, the area down there with the I think it was nineteen black families that came yeah. together, mm -hmm. and like and then the next week when uh, Maya sent us this story, uh, of course you know the couple this couple brought one thousand black people together to build an affordable community in Atlanta, and literally that that is a huge topic here affordable housing among among many uh predominantly black cities but um i mean just 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 talk about it uh because i we that's what people want to know they want to know when is this going to happen everything i got you I'll, I'll give you a little bit more background than that so you can even understand how we got to that point right um or whatnot but we got into real estate initially we were uh locating properties for investment firms and for investors okay. that's that's what we were doing so we weren't initially the buyers of these properties we were mm -hmm. in the middle we're like scouts almost we go find a property they tell us what they want and we go find the properties we found out that typically what they wanted was in the hood you know like <laughs> that's what that's what we started mm -hmm. seeing a pattern of it was like oh okay so you just want us to go into the hood and kind of mm -hmm. you know set these deals up for you. And we also saw what they were doing. So when right. we kind of caught on to that, a green light went off, we had enough information in order to do this ourselves. And that's exactly what we did. And since we were locating properties uh, for them, we already knew how to find, you know, good deals. Um, so that's, we were like, all right, we'll push the, the middleman out the way and go directly to the source, but not just do that. We'll also make sure that we uh, deal with our people our as people. far as the, the 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 fixed up housing and keeping yeah. the community <laughs> yeah because they yeah. pushing them out yeah move and break houses right yeah, exactly yeah so we <laughs> y'all see what i did there the brick I, okay don't worry i, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, bro. But yeah, but so anyway, we 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 were uh, focused on houses at the time, and we realized that the need was mm -hmm. way more significant than buying houses and renovating them could ever possibly solve. So that made us move to commercial real estate uh, as far as bigger properties like hotels, yeah, um, office buildings, and things like that or, or whatnot as a solution because there's just too many people to assist um right. or whatnot to go after houses and then we run into roadblocks there as well even though you know it's a it's a much better solution than just houses so we're doing houses and commercial properties in that sense and we're doing this actively now 
is one thing too we uh, that I want to make sure that you guys understand. We do mm -hmm. own property all, all around Atlanta, and we also already have a transitional program uh, that is ran through a nonprofit that houses these people. So we're actively housing families right now. Mm -hmm. And some of these families also work within our company. Right. So, you know, I want to make that clear because people are asking like, when are you gonna, and I'm like, we've been doing this for years. Right. You know, so, so this is not new. Now the mm -hmm. concept of the storage container homes, that is newer um, or whatnot. And right. that came about after the pandemic started because now the need is even more significant. Right. Uh, people don't have jobs. I mean, you guys know what's going on. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so now there's actually more homeless people than there were before and people facing homelessness and people are still being evicted right now. That's one thing right. too. Mm -hmm. uh, that, 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 that stuff Trump did, it didn't necessarily stop evictions um, or whatnot. So people are still getting evicted. And, and we're working with uh, organizations like United Way, Atlanta Mission, we're working with the big boys and they're calling and saying, we need, we need more, we need more, we need more, we need more. Like we got too many people that need housing. So that's what got us to the storage container situation because we think that it's a great solution uh, as far as uh, uh, renewable or recyclable uh, materials, uh, as far mm -hmm. as the storage containers, they're just sitting all around the world in different areas, just, just collecting dust. Um, also the, uh, the price point of them, oh, we're able to, yeah, we're able to build these out, um, or whatnot for under $50,000, um, install, uh, solar energy, um, and wow. the goal is to make it total solar, right. um, because there's a smaller space and don't get me wrong. You do have to sacrifice space in order to solve this, this, this problem. But right. I'll be honest with you, a lot of space that we had was just, uh, uh, extra anyway. Like, I mean, how many cars do you need? How many right. pairs of J's do you need? Right. How many, you know, phones do you need? All, all of that. So <laughs> we have to dial down in, in order to really uh, provide a solution, you know, for, for our people that's viable. And so, especially when you're coming from, for instance, you guys are in and from Atlanta. When you're coming from a tent city living underneath the interstate, mm -hmm. you know, now you have a room, a bed, kitchen, all of these things, it's definitely um, upward mobility. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, well, let me, let me, let me, we're gonna jump in real quick because we're gonna take a quick break because they are getting into it. I see we've already kind of merged into <laughs> Evopia. Okay, so um, for those who are listening, we are sitting here with Majesty and Elise and they're letting us know about pretty much how they took real estate to another level for people of color. So if you wanna hear about how you can be a part of this wonderful uh, thing that they're doing and how you can invest, but they did talk about investing about being in a membership, a part of it. You gotta keep listening. So come right back here now on Black Educated and Broke. When I'm not building affordable housing or impacting the community and looking to catch up on what's trending in the streets. Black Educated and Broke is the only show I'm listening to. <laughs> okay, God put his hands on y'all. Uh-huh, y'all heard what Maya just said. Yeah, you're listening to Black Educated and Broke here. We were talking with Majesty and Elise, and like um, on the break, we were asking them kind of specifics um, about how they kind of got it going on some things. And to make a short story short, not a long story short, and what I admire is pretty much a man meets a woman on a dating app, which, you know, I love this because that's how I met my boo. Mm -hmm. Oh, Instagram, <laughs> Trey Flexing. So anyway, but, <laughs> you know, I like that you found each other there. You know, you found each other when you both were trying to rebuild, right? You rebuild together. The young lady stepped out on faith and followed the man. The man said, "Bring hey, get a deal. Hey, but you got to bring my lady on. And then I got a whole empire. Talk about black love and excellence. <laughs> All the snaps, okay? So and, um, before we took the break, we were really getting more to Madge St. Elise's business, which is um, their, their project more so, Evopia. E right? I said, right? Evopia. <laughs> like evolution <laughs> in utopia. All right? And so if you guys can make a plan for our listeners, what plainly is Evopia? Okay. Well, Evopia, like on paper, is actually a 501c3 nonprofit member organization. That's actually mm -hmm. what it is. Um, and we, you know, our paperwork is filed. Anybody can see it as public information. Um, the goal of Evopia was to bring together our people to uh, not only discuss, but to actually take action on things that will be solutions for our community. Um, it, it, we just wanted to create a like-minded uh, situation where we could all come together and lend our skills and our um, networks and things like that. Kind of just, you know, uh, join forces or whatnot. 
So we weren't aware of anything that existed like that already. I mean, we do have like Urban League and you do have like NAACP, yeah. but honestly, they kind of have moved more to like a corporate um, type vibe. Like they're not really actively mm -hmm. in, the, in the streets like that, you know, like anymore. Like maybe they were like that, but it seems like they got kind of, I, and I'm, I, I hope I'm not being disrespectful, but a little whitewashed or whatnot. And, and we need something that's a little bit more grassroots. So that was our goal uh, with Evolpia. It was kind of really what's going on right here, right now. Like this, this, this right here is pretty dope. You know, like talking with uh, uh, different minds in different places, you know, among the coach and discussing solutions. Okay, okay so now- Talk about the, uh, go ahead, Mai, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I was gonna segue over to the Push Nation. They were talking about Evolpia. So when it comes to the Push Nation, how are they, you know, different or how are they similar? What are the both, what are the two main goals when it comes to? That's true. Well, Push Nation is actually also a 501c3 yeah. <laughs> nonprofit, uh, but we created that one separately to uh, be specific to initiatives as far as community service. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so we, that's where we have our food bank. That's where we have our transitional housing right. program. That's where we have everything where we're actually giving to, to the, the community. community. Every we give to the community in the form of PUSH, which right. stands for Persist Until Success Happens. Mm. Yeah. Mm, there we go. <laughs> Persist. Damn. Yeah, I like that. Jesse didn't think of that one. I like that. <laughs> Dope. That's dope. Yeah. Well, and uh, the sake of dead air, I wanted to ask a question or more so a comment. Yes, I went on your Instagram page and I saw like the homes and you don't expect to see that kind of design and modern living in inside of uh, one of those cargo containers. Now, do you guys outsource the designing or is that you doing that? Well, we, we actually um, have <laughs> one of our little babies running around, but <laughs> we, we, we have four kids, by the way. So, oh, uh, man, y'all have definitely four. <laughs> yeah, four? Uh, but, um, uh, we actually my. <laughs> are in construction ourselves from our recent, you know, experience. We've been flipping houses, uh, doing right. deals with partners and things like that from before. So we already have those, those contacts. But we recently, actually after the pandemic, we decided to acquire a, a construction company, a bigger one, so that we could grow. We try, to, we try to do the same things that we see Bezos and Elon Musk and those do. Mm -hmm. When they want to grow, they acquire mm -hmm. a business and they, it, because you can grow quick, more quickly that way than trying yeah. to start from ground zero. So mm -hmm. that allowed us to be able to kind of expand um, what we're able to do. And now we have a full-time um, project manager, you know, with, with 30, 40 years of experience. And now we have a construction crew and we have tools and we have equipment. Warehouse. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, a warehouse and everything mm -hmm. like that. So we're actually able to build these uh, containers on site at our warehouse. And we're act actively building a model right now in at Atlanta. Warehouse. Our warehouse is in on Fulton Industrial. Mm -hmm. So so we anytime y'all want to come through, feel Please. free. We're actually uh, having- Are y'all around the corner from me? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're having a grand opening on October 1st. And so I'd love to okay. invite yes. all of you guys. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. You. I just want to go, go about- I'm sorry, Mike, you want to go ahead? Go ahead, go ahead. How does one I'm going go, back to the website. go about acquiring like a business and then because yeah, so when I think about things like I've, or I've worked, yeah. yeah, I've I've had jobs where like a lot of people don't know when you work enterprise, once you become branch manager, that is essentially your business. All right. So I didn't have to run business and I know that I get paid off my bottom line after I've paid all my employees and my expenses. But how does one go about acquiring a business that's already established and then you have to pay project managers, construction crews and all of that? Like, talk to us about that. Well, you know, that, that, and that can be a whole segment by itself, but I'll do my best to kind of to kind of run through it. But at, at the end of the day, it's all about sales. It's all about cold calling, I guess you could say in a sense. Mm. You identify what you want and then you go after that. It's almost like if you see a female that you're interested in, or, or I say female because typically the male is the one that's, um, you know, pursuing, but it can go both ways. It's similar to that. 
um, when you identify a business that you're interested in, you basically go to, you, and, 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 you, and there's ways you can do this, find the information, there's the internet now. Uh, reach out to that to that uh, business and basically let them know that you're interested and, and ask them if they're open to listening to an offer. Um, most people aren't gonna say no to that. You, you know, they're at least gonna have the conversation and to have that conversation, they have to give you their financials um, or whatnot on, on the business. So what you're doing is buying the business at a discount. Um, or whatnot to what they're actually earning. Like a lot of businesses right now are doing anywhere between about three to five times earnings. Um, and, I, and I don't want to get too technical, but you know how much they're making, they make giving three to five times uh, 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 in, in acquisition, in a, in a purchase price on the property. But you may be able to make 10 times more than that with some changes that you implement. So it's, it's more about structuring the deal and, and you approach that person. Like you identify, I see something, it's like, oh, okay, that company right there looks good. Or more so you let someone know that you're in the business for, I don't know, a jewelry company um, or whatnot. And they may have the, uh, the contacts for that. Lawyers are good for that as well. There's merger and acquisition uh, lawyers. Um, and that's who you probably will want to go to if you didn't want to necessarily just go to them directly. What I wanted to ask about, you have seen it with 501C, you know, you said, I, I get it, you're making that very plain. And I want to know if, you know, starting a nonprofit, like, and you have a business, is it best to start the nonprofit first, then the business, or should you have the business and make it a nonprofit? Like, how does that really go? I would, I would really have to know a lot more about your strategy to, to really tell you truthfully uh, what would be best in that situation. But I mean, like, how did y'all do it too as well? I'm sorry. As well, like, what did y'all do first? Did y'all blend them together? Oh, our businesses were already yeah. going first, yeah. and I was gonna say that I would honestly say that that would be what I recommend for most people, unless you have a special situation, because it funds mm -hmm. the nonprofit. Because the nonprofit is not gonna fund itself. Yeah. Initially. Like we 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 fund the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like when we're doing giving out food in the community. That's us putting our personal money into the nonprofit. Okay. We donated that money. And now, do you see what I'm saying? Like, yes. so until you kind of get it going um, or whatnot, you got to get your 501c3 status, which sometimes mm -hmm. takes people up to 12 months yep. um, or whatnot. And, and there's there's some ways to get that done quicker, which we could, you know. Uh, we'll talk about that off air because I would love to know that. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and also, uh, once you uh, start can can go for grants, but they like to see that you're already doing something. Um, right. So right. they can put money into something that's right. already going. So I would say the business first for that reason, generate some income, some profits, and then put that mm -hmm. into the profit. I want to talk about the initiatives. I mean, it, it's 10 initiatives when you go to the website. And I mean, those initiatives, that's what we talk about in the community. That's that's what we want. We want the best in education. We want to be at the seat when it comes to politics. I mean, just just uh, financial stability uh, amongst our people. But how how can people join the membership? How can they join? Okay, well, <laughs> I see you brought it right on up. Um, I brought it right on up for you guys. Let's get into it. Well, well hey. uh, <laughs> they basically can sign up on the website and right. that will give them access to our online platform. Um, and the online platform is like a, a, a simplified version of maybe like a Facebook um, mm -hmm. or whatnot. So you'll see other members on there uh, mm -hmm. and, or, or whatnot. And it's completely free to sign up. Um, or whatnot, and the initiatives, yes, they're very important. And we kind of, um, you know, spoke with other people in the community and saw that these are the things that were most important, but we mm -hmm. also saw these were the things where we were lacking because we're expecting other cultures and other situations to give this to us right. when we need to take control of these right. things and, and, and more so kind of grab them, like, like take them and, and demand them, you know, you know, in that sense. And we can do so as a collective because we have plenty of money circulating within our community we just got to absolutely you know into the places that matter like education right now i i i'm very concerned about the education system um across the country like you know the what's happening there our kids are being left behind slowly a lot of them kids don't even have computers right you know right. and they worried about their lunches and it because that's something else we do like we're involved with other nonprofits to get these kids lunches and but stuff where does education stem from zoning 
Zoning. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. census. Goes back to real estate. And real estate, That's all of that. Real all of that goes in there. Yeah. <laughs> Right. That's why the, the the places with uh, that's why some of the more higher end areas, let's take Gwinnett County for instance, they want their kids in school because that's a part of the money and yep. the funding. Mm -hmm. The better the funding, the better the education, which gets them to the next level. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But, um, Absolutely. And then look at these chapters. I mean, spread or not, Atlanta, Baton Rouge, Miami, Cleveland, D.C. And let you guys know that um, we are at 3,000 members now. Yeah. Yes. I posted that, that we were at 1,000. Now we're at 3,000. How long have you guys been in business? How long has it been going on? In, when you were in business. In, in How long has Evopia been going on? Oh, we started Evopia uh, around, I was, it was, it was either around the pandemic April. or something. It was, it was this year. It was this year. Okay. We, 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 saw, we saw what was going on before, and we've always been in affordable housing, so we wanted to run something parallel for our people mm -hmm. to bring us together beforehand. And then the pandemic was like, okay, it's now or never. Somebody mm -hmm. has to do something. That's yeah. the thing. We all have to take action mm -hmm. in some way. It's no longer enough to just comment or right. post something. Yeah. Like, you got to actually create something that creates some type of tangibles in our, in our community. So we just, that was our way of doing that. And, and you know, it's kind of taking off. So, you know, we're, we're happy that people are like-minded and getting involved. And we also mm. noticed around that time that there was a lot of censorship going on in mm. social yep. media, on Facebook and Instagram. A lot of people, I, I guess you could say, quote unquote, woke uh, individuals <laughs> that a lot of people follow for your real news. Um, we're being muted, you know, they're, they can't go live. When we did lives with yep. other people, like there was a lot of interference with Instagram. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it was imperative that we started this independent platform for us to come together and communicate with each other without that, you know, interference or without the watchdogs. Yeah, and I wanted to add something as well. Um, and I guess we can call it an exclusive or something, but we actually were in the background having an app developed by a black developer um, or whatnot. Okay. And the app is going to go live in, I say maybe a week or two. And this is okay. absolutely free for members once again, nice. um, but it will have live streaming capabilities uh, that has Zoom embedded into it. So we could actually be doing this on the Evopia app. Oh, awesome. So that, that's going to be launching soon and everybody will have access to it. But it's more about us being able to have conversations like this where we don't have some random white person coming in saying, yeah. you know, y'all, you, you, you feel what I'm saying? Like, so we yeah. can right. alone, you know, and talk about some real solutions without having to feel like uh, Black Lives Matter, this, that. We don't want to, we just want to talk amongst ourselves. So that's mm -hmm. going live in about a week or two, an app. It'll be available on Android and on uh, uh, iPhone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. Register. Let me go register. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and so, and, please, 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 yeah, yeah. We should, it's, it's free to register. And I guess what I just want to make sure that I'm understanding. So overall, you guys, uh, you you offer people to get affordable housing. It's pretty much. And so if they're, if they're interested, they go on the website, they register. Now the membership, what is this? What are you paying for this membership for? What are you getting access to have? Well, one, you're not paying. The membership is There's free. There's no membership. At, it, none of the memberships cost. No, no, no. With everything's free. No, we make our money in real estate, and then we and then we come back and give it to the community. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. I don't oh, know yeah. if it's clear for oh, everybody yeah. else. Mm -hmm. it is. That's yes. why we don't charge for anything because we're blessed. I, you know, we work yes. hard. Like we're good over right. here in real estate. We make we do good deals. You see what I'm saying? And then we yeah. come back mm -hmm. to the community and say, all right, here, this this is how we give back to the community. That's that's my personal form of tithing or, or, or whatnot. Yes. So, uh, that's, that's, so that's, it's, that's it's almost like if people want to be, uh, this is how I'm trying to understand it too, to make it plain, like if they're on section eight, it's like okay. that, but it's like, but bl the government is not over it. It is like you're at, you got your business, you're helping doing the same thing, but you're giving it for free, yes. you're not charging them anything like that well, no the, the, no i'm sorry the people that are reside in the properties they definitely pay to yeah, reside yeah. in the properties they typically have member. their have their uh payments subsidized yes by, like, okay, by, like some, by some right. organization the government something like okay. that so they're usually not paying that much if they're paying anything um or whatnot and also we keep the rates at, at what's called a, the affordable housing rate means 30 percent of the median income of that area or under so we right. maintain all of our, our rates under that. 
oh, to make true. sure that you know they can have they can have some yeah. extra money to mm -hmm. do the things that they need to do and then we offer the extra programs to help them through different things um or whatnot like our our, our case manager helps them through some life problems and things like that parenting classes all financial that. literacy yeah all that training, yeah et cetera, et cetera. Wow. And no no extra charge no that's through the nonprofit. Oh hey, y'all! That is that with is the happening. affordable housing. Are you guys? You say you're working with uh, United Way, so the uh, it's another organization. I know they're helping with a lot of people, just trying to get people in homes because they lost their homes uh, during the pandemic because they they couldn't afford to pay rent. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And, and there's a lot of okay. like that right now. Uh, one is uh, another one is uh, Hope Foundation. Uh, they're yes, doing a, hope. They're doing okay. some things for people right now, but a lot of those situations, unfortunately, are temporary. Uh, for example, right. hope, hope Foundation hope will put you like in a hotel or something, but it's like for thirty days. Um, so you have to figure it out within thirty days, and then they're pushing you out mm. um, or whatnot. So we, our program is actually for a year, and that's to work okay. with you to get your thing. We, I'm talking about credit repair. You know what I mean? And then that year mm -hmm. gives you also that uh, uh, when you go to apply for somewhere, you can say you have residency, the, yeah, residency. and, and they, they, they'll call our and company like and that. say, hey, did they, yeah. yeah, they lived here. They were a yep. great, you know, tenant. Um, so you, you see what I'm saying? Like we set them up yeah. to move to the next, to the next level. That's and how you excellent. look out for your people. That's, right. that's right. what we all about, man. I, I know it's it, a lot of times it, it, it can come off, especially with the fakes. And with the people that aren't that way, mm -hmm. it can come mm -hmm. off like you. And I and I I, I, don't, I never want to speak uh, ill on our people, but we are deathly serious about what we do. We notice that it's a it's a tribe. We can't be successful or have peace without you also having success or peace. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I mean. Like we can all eat. Like this, it doesn't have to be that way um, or whatnot. So that's how we're thinking. It's like a collective situation. We lift each other up. That's that's where we are. Because he has, I watched y'all clap back at Mike from our Instagram page. <laughs> I was sitting there, I was sitting there looking All like I was either they are for I real, they have to be, or they, for they real. are shooking and jiving, but they give the Mike the business. <laughs> They I, I told me, they said, they said, hey, you hey, don't hey, have to do no digging. I said, I was like, oh, they for real. Look, I come from a marketing background. Okay, marketing communications, journalism. Yeah, that's I do. You know, that's my thing. Uh, so I, I, I watched the comments. I was like, "Who is this?" I was like, "I know this isn't somebody who claims to be a journalist." Yeah. Not doing, you know, journalism doing really research. Like, oh, yeah. talk. We'll talk to you guys all day. What do you that, <laughs> I said, "Oh, no, they are for real." Anything like that? It was just genuinely like. You know, I saw an opportunity to like open up conversation, yes. open up discussion. Absolutely. Because Most right people get offended. I was like, let's bring them on. Then. Yeah. Yes. I, I understand. Maya said, Mike always starting stuff. Not always. <laughs> always. <laughs> always. If it ain't Mike, it's cute. Watch Wait your a minute. Whoa. You just got here 30 minutes ago, Mike. Tell them. <laughs> sir, sir. But listen, I want y'all to real quickly uh just drop the websites and your social media so people can just know what to do. They they, they we got you got to because y'all around the corner at Fulton Industrial. Yeah, y'all right street. here in Southwest Atlanta. I can I go walk if I want to. Yeah, yeah, over there about uh uh I'm not gonna say that on the mic. That we work on that area. That's the old stopping right. That area. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay. We're working on it. We're working yeah. on that whole Sodom and Gomorrah, as we call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God! Let them, put the, let them drop their social media and the websites, please. Okay, so you can follow us on social media at Majesty underscore Elise, and you can register for free for our platform at Evopia dot org. All right, that's it. We appreciate anything else, y'all. No, we just want to say thank you yeah, once again for you. having us on oh. here and and. Most definitely. Okay. And also, um, <laughs> if anybody is in need of affordable housing or also food, we do food donations, food right. drive, um, yeah, reach out. go to pushnation.net and out. you can fill out a form for our affordable housing yeah. initiative and um, fill out a form to receive free food. So. Yeah, it's all love. Absolutely. Yeah. Be, be, I'll be reaching out to you soon. This was Black Educated and Evopia right mm -hmm. here on Black Educated and Broke. Yeah. Black Educated and Broke can be found on many platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and our hard radio music app. So if you need somewhere to listen but don't want to download a bunch of apps, choose one of those. You're bound to have one of them on your phone, right? Right? That's what I thought. 
Podcast Educated and Broke, Season 3, coming right at you.